A massive solar storm erupts on the sun, sending billions of energetic, electrically charged particles hurtling towards Earth. Interfering with satellites, disrupting navigational systems, knocking out power grids. Sounds like science fiction. It's not. Solar activity is ultimately having an impact on our technologies that we use every day. It's the job of research scientist Robin Fiore to study the behavior of the sun and provide a warning system for when something big is about to take place. So whenever there's a magnetic storm and we have an explosion of energetic particles coming from the sun, these will interact with the Earth's magnetic field. They call it a coronal mass ejection, or CME, and the visible manifestation is a beautiful aurora borealis. But not everything is pretty about their impact. They cause a strong perturbation that can cause currents to be induced in long conductors like power systems. And the impacts of this can be quite wide ranging from voltage fluctuations within operating parameters to ex more extreme events where we would see a blackout of the system. Charged particles from solar flares are pulled in by the Earth's magnetic field and drawn towards the North and South Pole. So we are at a greater risk. Canada is one of the countries that's most vulnerable to the impacts of solar activity and space weather. This keeps Fiori and her colleagues at the Canadian Hazards Information Service busy. So we have satellites located near and above the Earth and we have ground-based instruments as well. And these help us to look at the impacts of the solar activity on our magnetic field and also on the upper atmosphere and ionosphere so that we can look at potential impacts to the systems on and near the Earth. It's about to get a lot more energetic. Solar activity occurs in 11 year cycles and we are now moving from a minimum activity level to a maximum one. We're starting to see more and more activity and we're starting to expect the potential for more impacts to some of these sensitive systems. Power grids are one of those systems with over 4 million customers. Hydro-Quebec is acutely aware of the risks. So how many people would this service we met with Louis Gibson, an engineer from Hydro-Quebec. In March 1989, there was a big uh, solar storm and it took the power of uh, Hydro-Quebec, so we had a blackout. And to this day, this is the biggest impact a solar storm had on any electrical utility. So this for us was a wake-up call and uh, we had to take this matter very seriously since then. That power failure forced the public utility to install safety equipment to protect the system from sudden electrical surges caused by storms. And they regularly run simulation scenarios to test everything. When you say this was a wake-up call, explain that. This was a wake-up call for the entire industry? So there is a, um, a standard in place now in North America where uh, the electrical utilities have to make sure, they have to plan and prepare the network so they can withstand a one in a hundred year event, solar storm event. For this, we get help from various space weather experts. That one in a 100 year storm is what everyone worries about. One already happened in 1859, known as the Carrington event. It was a storm so big that it literally set telegraph wires on fire. It could happen again and most likely will, but this time it will impact a lot more than just our power grids. Energetic particles coming from the sun can directly impact satellites, causing disruptions to their operation, even causing the satellites to become disabled or reducing the lifespan of the satellites. Recently, there's been talk of how critical cables running under the sea might also be at risk. In the UK, Tony Frisch is the chief technical officer for Xterra, a provider of international subsea fiber optic systems. These cables are the things that you use when you're doing a Zoom call, um, when you're surfing on the internet and you're trying to get content from one country to another. There's probably uh, enough cable in the seas to go around the world about 30 to 50 times. There's a component of these cables known as a repeater that is particularly sensitive to solar activity. 
We have some very expensive power equipment which provides the power for the submerged electronics and that drives current all the way through the centre of the cable. If you had a really big storm event that could induce quite large current to go through the cable. One of the problems with a cable like this is that it's in a sense the worst possible thing that you could have. It's very long so lots of current could get induced in it. But Frisch believes there's a solution. If you knew that there was an event coming uh, you would in fact uh, turn the cable system down and disconnect it until you were sure that that event was finished. Because the good thing about uh, these really extreme events is that you get some warning for them. A one to three day warning in fact, thanks to the work of researchers like Fiori. That's the role of the Canadian Hazards Information Service because space weather is a hazard. It's a hazard of the technological age, right? So this is, this is why we perform this research as well.